Sound familiar? I was just out here relaxing. Just trying to get myself mentally prepared because today's another one of those days. And we're going to do our very best to serve you as well as we possibly can. So I have a review today and I want to share that with you. So stay tuned. Come all you moonshiners if you want to hear About the kind of bull that they serve around here Made way back in top of them hills where they Welcome back, I'm George. Again, as always, glad to have you here. Subscribe, share us with your friends, like. One, two, three, that's it. Listen, um, from time to time I have an opportunity um, which is kind of unique in a way uh, because I get a chance to mess with new stuff or existing stuff that just is not moving or is well known. And today happens to be one of those days. Um, if you recall, we added a heating element to, a, an, to an existing still. Remember that. I mean, we had drilled a hole in the side of it and then we needed that weldless uh, flange. And so we went to Mini Brew and ordered that it was like 17 bucks and it was a weldless flange and went inside of it that way we could add our element we're like everybody was happy well um jeremy from a uh, mini brew got in touch with me um, and asked me if i would do a review on a product and i'm um, absolutely um it, but of course as with all products i told him up front that here's the deal if you send me a piece of junk i'm going to tell people it's a piece of junk um, or I'm just not going to do it, and you're out the piece of junk. Um, if it's worthy, or I think it's valuable, and it's just all a guess at that point, but it's a pretty substantial, uh, exper experience-driven guess um, and demonstration, oh, well, then certainly I'll share it with the community because it's valuable. Now, up front, I have to be honest. No, I did not pay for this. He sent it to me, and I'm like, okay. So I have nothing invested in this, so I've lost nothing. So I'm going to give you the honest, down, and dirty what I really think about Mini Brew. Now, Jeremy um, has, has kind of retooled the company and, and, and done a lot of different things, so it's really, really unique. Uh, it's, this is a company that's been in existence for a long, long time. Um, good products. Uh, but, you know, uh, then again, when it comes to marketing and things like that, you know, you, you have to upgrade with the times, you know, new website and things like that. Um, and, w of course, we purchase our uh, weldless bulkheads from Mini Brew. Uh, they have the fer their fermenters. Now, here are the options. Uh, they, gosh, they go from 6.5 gallons, I think, to like 110 gallons. Uh, they're, they're pretty unique uh, within themselves and just, I mean, aesthetically, they look really neat. Uh, we've got one here, and it comes, here's the box it comes in. <laughs> so I'm going to show you this, and then we're going to walk through this thing and assemble it step by step. This is an 8-gallon model, okay? Now, for an 8-gallon model, this thing is pretty unique just to start with. I'm, uh, uh, you know, and I'm, I'll talk about it as we go through. Uh, uh, they send you a, a bunch of flyers and, and, and things like that that come in the box with it. Um, oh, wow, put that away. Uh, he also sent me his a Mini Brew t-shirt, so that is really cool, thank you. Um, uh, let's start uh, by, by showing you what you get, what comes inside. Of course, the two rings, four legs, all the hardware you need, um, and that only requires a Phillips screwdriver, a 10 millimeter wrench, um, an adjustable crescent wrench, and a BACL big ass channel lock and that's for them large bulkheads um, th th I mean, this is great and of course in the fermenter the lid and all the other accoutrements and parts that you really need um, so simply um, it's well designed well put together and uh, I mean th these are made out of aluminum so they're lightweight but they're durable and sturdy what I want to talk about right up front um, and this is what we're going to talk about value for uh, equipment, all right? Uh, and we'll kind of lay this out at the very end. I mean, uh, you can tell up front that if I'm talking about it, it's probably a good item. Uh, but how good is it? That's the question. Um, 
Now, the only thing I have to compare this with is something like the Fermentosaurus or the Fast Ferment, uh, which are equally fair products uh, for their price. Um, this one is a little bit more expensive, <coughs> which I would expect um, because of the bulkheads. Um, these are all stainless steel, food grade stainless steel. And you get several of those and, and all the other accoutrements and then, of course, the ball valves that go on the bottom. Uh, up front, uh, it's not, it's, it's a little bit more than, what are you paying, 120, 125 maybe for... Um, the uh, a fast ferment that hangs on a wall, or you can buy the stand that goes with it. This one's about 100, 6.5 gallon models, 190, 195 bucks, something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's it's well worth the cost to start with. Um, now here's some of the things that are really unique about it, though, that I think is really really good. Um, you can reach inside here, in this opening, um, just like most of them. But the first thing I noticed was how smooth the inside is. Um, that makes a difference when it comes to fermentation. Um, in some of the models uh, that, that you may be accustomed to, you can feel the inside, you can feel it's a little bit porous or just a little bit rough. Um, and, and that will allow things to stick to it and build up on the sides. This one is um, a bit more smooth on the inside so I think that uh, that reduces that potential. Um, one of the other things that I found that was really really good in the very beginning is that I just took out a pair of calipers and I just wanted to measure this and this thing is if you measure it I, I get about eight and a half millimeters or five sixteenths of an inch and five sixteenths of an inch just let me get it here for you for reference is, you see your finger? It's about as, it's a little bit more than a quarter of an inch thick. And it's about the size of the thickness of my finger or across my pinky fingernail. So my pinky, did you know, so, by the way, that from that bone to, the, to your wrist bone, the distance between here is the length of your foot? The, the, your body's kind of proportionate, you know? If you stretch your arms out fingertip to fingertip, that's how tall you are. Um, there's just it's just little tips. So if you're ever in a shoe store, yeah, okay. So the, um, we're talking about an extremely thick wall uh, in constructions on the on construction on this thing, uh, which to me, see, I start thinking about the second, third order effects. Uh, what value does that add? Well, besides stability and being sturdy um, and being clean, um, I, I think of thermal properties um, and thermal transfer and the security. So um, I, I find it pretty fascinating that uh, this is as thick as it really is because it really does make a difference. All right. Now, um, along with that, of course, uh, now, and Jeremy's working on a bunch of different adaptations. Uh, as an example, uh, he's working on an addition to this that would attach through the lid well, the heater element, that uh, fermentation, uh, to maintain the temperature inside here. Uh, and he and I, we talked a little bit about, briefly about PID control. Um, th so there are some adaptations and some other accessories you can add to this. A really stout uh, cap with a, a thick rubber gasket and all the other pieces you need. So. I'll be with you shortly because what I'm going to do is start to assemble this and we're going to get it all put together and then we're going to go through it briefly and, and describe how it works, what it does, and what do I really think of this thing. It's going together rather easy. Um, again, it's just a simple follow the instructions. Just doing the final tightening. Uh, this thing is what I'm talking, first of all, we're at like maybe 10 minutes, and I work slow. Yep, stop, get a coffee. There it is. One firm frame. Now that was an exercise in simplicity. Assembling the, the frame and it just, just, this just slides in. It's got these bevels that hold it in there. Very well made, very well designed. Got, I'm, I'm happy with that. And the standoff here is such that 
uh, there's a lot of advantages to that standoff, and uh, I'll share those here just a little bit. So let's get to putting the fermenter uh, pieces on it and uh, see how that works out. Now, when you start adding these bulkheads, and see, this is uh, the one just like the one that we uh, that we described um, when we added our element. Uh, matter of fact, this is actually the same size. Uh, so, and remember, we talked about this before. It was the the way it's threaded: righty tighty, lefty loosey. You know, the simple. Well, this one's lefty tighty, righty loosey, um, and that really serves a good purpose because when you get in there and start tightening it up, and it only collapses and tightens on itself. So, uh, and you'll notice that in all of these openings that they have on here are not threaded, which is a benefit because if it's threaded and you cross thread it, you're done. Um, these are all open so that you can use these bulkhead fittings, uh, which again, 304 stainless steel. Uh, it's amazing. Um, you gotta have a long arm for this. And then put that one on there. Oh. I'll be back. Got it. Now, you're definitely going to need a little bit of thread tape, but I mean, that, you would need that with any kind of a plumbing fixture. Um, and I've got this, and you'll see that it comes with this one inch adapter. There it is. Yep. That goes right in there. And then your ball valve just screws on the end of that. This is the on off a dumping mechanism. And you've got this really huge hole to dump with. All right, let's move on to the next piece. Now here we have, really we have a very similar bulkhead, uh, again, stainless steel. Um, and that goes down here to the bottom where we have a, an emptying port. Um, and I'll have to wait till I get this together to show you kind of the design and how this thing actually works. So you can see that goes right here. And then you've got this other adapter collar that goes on here. And another flow valve that just screws right on top of that. Bam. Now, one more that we have is there's another one located right here. Um, and this one is for Multi-purpose, I mean, you do a lot of different things. One, it looks like it's a great port for maybe a heater. Um, it's also a super port for a thermometer. Um, and those come separate, but you, know, you put a thermometer right here. Uh, there's a lot of different, a lot of different things you can do with that. And this goes on exactly the same way the other ones did. Lefty tighty righty Lucy. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Now I'm doing this just hand tight just to get it assembled and, and kind of walk through it. Now, since I do not have uh, the thermometer, uh, I've got a plug that just screws right in there. That comes with it uh, so you can plug it off. Uh, but it, it makes for a very unique and a very useful accessory port for whatever you're going to use it for. Now, oh, there's also another nipple that goes to the bottom here, and that way you can hook a rubber hose to it. That's just for, uh, very useful, and oh, by the way, you can adapt that and you get larger ones, smaller, but whatever the case may be, whatever you want to do. <laughs> now, last but not least, let me bring this And I like the way that fits in the frame because it's just, and oh, by the way, I haven't done that yet, but I've got these black caps that go on the top and also on the bottom, which kind of sacks it up a little bit and also protect the floor if you slide on the floor. Now, the cap is really simple. Of course, you just screw that on. Now, you're going to ask the question, George, it's a fermenter. What about, what about, what about? Yeah, okay. It, we have the three-piece airlock that they send with it. And, yes, 
there is a port. You'll notice there's a port right here. It's where your rubber bung goes and your airlock. Well, look at that. Okay, bottom line. Um, this 8-gallon model, uh, which is relatively large uh, compared to what we normal home brewers use. Uh, but 8 gallons is 30.3 liters. It gives me plenty of room, uh, plenty of capacity. Uh, the thickness, uh, first of all, just the, the, the aesthetics, the, the, the view, it's kind of neat looking. Um, of course, it causes people to ask questions, so looks cool. Um, five sixteenths of an inch thick. That is phenomenal. Um, and you, you have to think about that on, for its beneficial properties. And, and I always look at it a little bit more deeper as in thermal properties. Uh, something cold stays cold, something hot stays hot. Uh, so you've got a certain amount of insulation there. Um, you've got a port for a thermometer and or some sort of a heater source. Um, large opening on the top, of course, you know, you're, you're, you're a bubbler for a fermentation. Um, what's really unique right here, though, what goes on is what you'll find in other brands, but what's different here is that once your yeast fall out and everything starts to collect in the bottom of this cone, uh, you're able to collect, since you're not collecting from the bottom of the cone, you're able to collect from higher up which is going to be your clear liquid and since your liquid is flowing this way it won't pull any of that sludge out. Pretty unique design. Um, you could also give it one big opening and flush some of that sediment out if that's what you wanted to do. But the real benefit of having this this large valve on the bottom uh, is for collection. If you're interested in collecting some of that sludge, you know, once everything else is gone, is it's just a simple open, you can collect all of that sludge and it's all you can leave it open uh, for cleaning. Uh, some of that, of course, hey, you, you can repurpose that yeast. Um, please look it up. Don't, don't write in and ask me about it. You can repurpose that yeast. There, there are many different uses for the sludge left in the bottom. Remember we also talked about sour mashes, you know, things like that. Um, there are some purposes for that. Um, in most cases, you'll do what I do is uh, you'll probably just open it up and let it go. I, you know, it is what it is. God, love it. I think it's a wonderful, it's, it's a wonderful addition to our uh, a, a brewing capability here. Oh, my goodness. Happy distilling.